Hey, what's up everybody? True Boxing here. Thank you for coming back to get hit with the truth. So I'm going to do the recap from the, the zone card uh, that took place September 25th. Uh, that was highlighted by the Anthony Joshua Alexander Usyk Unified Heavyweight title fight. Uh, we're going to jump into the undercard first and uh, take a look at a couple of the fights that occurred there. We start off with Callum Smith's debut at 175 light heavyweight. And he took on, um, uh, was it, uh, God, I'm drawing the blank on the guy's name, Castillo. And um, what a shocker that was. Um, actually, his name's not Castillo. Why am I drawing a blank on this guy? Uh, Alvarez is what his name was. I'm sorry. And um, what an uh, what what a shocking turn of events. Callum Smith looked like he's ready to play at 175. He one punch knocked out Alvarez. What a brutal shot. Second round. Um, you know, you could tell in the first round that his shots were affecting Alvarez, but. You know, he figured it was the first round, we'd see what happens, and boom, just a one-two punch, right on the money, sent Alvarez down in a heap, He's, his legs started shaking, everything, scary turn of events, you know, you wanted to see um, how uh, how he could possibly uh, bounce back, you know, uh, you know, from that, but that was a scary one, that really was, that was a tough, tough uh, knockout right there, but Cal Smith passes his test at 175, and that's what he needed. He was coming off of a, um, coming off of a, you know, that bad um, one-sided decision to Canelo last year. Lost his title. Didn't even put up a fight. And coming in here against uh, Alvarez, who was a good, you know, good solid opponent. He had taken uh, Demetri Bavall 12 rounds a couple years ago, and um, you know, you just wanted to see uh Callum Smith had some success and man did he ever he just blasted him out of there two rounds one punch knockout big confidence booster for Callum Smith right there we'll see if he comes back before the end of the year or if he comes back early 2021 but I mean 2022 but this is a big way to come back following his first defeat um you know and, and a bad loss to Canelo so I uh, you know, can't wait to see Cal Smith back. He's definitely going to break into the top 10 at 175 now for sure. And, uh, again, congratulations to him. That was a big win. Okay, the undercard saw uh, Prasovich make his uh, undefeated mandatory number one contender. he never been in a 10-round or a 12-round fight in his career, and he took on the undefeated Lawrence O'Coley. And, you know, outside of O'Coley's, um, six round knockout of Christoph Bowachki, the former two time champ, um, that took place in March to capture the title. You know, Coley hadn't done much either against a high level competition. He was 16 and 0, 13 knockouts, but Prasovich was, was, um, I want to say he was 15 and 0 with 12 knockouts. So pretty even records, good knockout ratios. And, you know, you want to see what each guy had, you know, and, Man, it didn't last long in this one either. Uh, Coley just blasted Prasovich out of there, stopping him in just a couple rounds. Um, he put him down early, uh, head shot, put him down hard, but then the body shot is what uh, folded Prasovich, and you know, a nice win for um, for him as he moves forward. Uh, Lawrence O'Coley, he wants to try to unify belts. We'll see if that's in the cards, um, you know, next. But he got his mandatory out of the way, and that was a big deal right there. That's what you want to do. Get your mandatory out of the way to focus on possible unification bouts, and that's what's happening next. So congratulations to Okoli. Good performance in his first title defense, and we'll see what he does next. But the main event, Anthony Joshua, Alexander Usyk, unified heavyweight title. It did not disappoint, and we had a major upset. Alexander Usyk outworks and outboxes Anthony Joshua to a convincing 12-round unanimous decision. Um, I didn't have a problem with the decision at all. It could have been closer. Um, some people might have had it more of a lead. I personally had it 116-112, which is what uh, two of the judges had it. Um, eight rounds to four for Usyk. You know, I had Usyk winning three of the first four rounds, and then I had Joshua winning three of the next four rounds. 
So after eight rounds, I had it four to four, dead even. And Usyk um, turned it on in the ninth and tenth round and carried that into the championship rounds. And, um, you know, Joshua just faded. He did. He looked tired. And it was because of the style of fight that Usyk forced Joshua in. You know, he uh, Joshua was forced into a thinking trying to figure out boxing match against a master class boxer and that just was a mistake see joshua is good he's a good boxer puncher he is he has intense power and he's a pretty solid boxer but he's a combo and he's not uh, a great power puncher in terms of like a brawler and he's also not a great boxer but he's solid and good at both so that's a good combination but when you go and try to fight your opponent's kind of fight and your opponent is great at, at his fight, you're going to lose, you know? And that's what happened here. I think the mental strain wore Joshua down. I think Joshua lowering himself to his opponent's height like he did against Andrew Ruiz, that hurt him. And, you know, and he just kept getting hit in that right eye that swelled up in the late rounds. And Usyk took advantage of it, you know? Usyk just was, I, I said it in my breakdown video, he, his timing was gonna be the key, that he had impeccable timing on his punches, and Joshua needed to watch out for that. And one thing that worked when Joshua was winning rounds was the jab. When Joshua would jab, that worked. When he was uppercutting to the body, he had that one round where he landed about four or five uppercuts to the body, and you could tell it affected Usyk. But Usyk stayed on his game plan, and um, he did not let Joshua take the fight from him late in the fight. Usyk went into the late rounds like we know him to do. He turns it up in the late rounds, and he turned it up. He turned it up early, he turned it up late, and he got a clean, unanimous decision. It was a very, very nice win, the biggest, biggest of his career for sure. And to be honest, this puts him at the top of the pound for pound list right there with Canelo. And he's right neck and neck with Canelo, in my opinion. Huge win right there. Tough, tough loss for Anthony Joshua. It was, you know, but he lost to a great fighter. So people need to stop criticizing Joshua for not being as good as we thought he was. He lost to a great fighter. And for the people to say he lost to a, to a small guy, you know what? Evander Holyfield was a small guy. Michael Moore was a small guy. Chris Bird was a small guy. Those guys were all heavyweight champions. I want to say Chris Bird was smaller than than him. I want to say he was 6'2". I could be wrong. It might have been 6'4". But Usyk is only 6'3". I mean, he, he's 6'3". So Joshua is 6'6". You know, that's not a, a, you know, a complete, you know, oh my God, giant thing. Yeah, they're used to fighting. Yeah, Usyk's used to fighting smaller guys. But he's a guy that can make heavyweight. He already beat a credible heavyweight in Derek Chisora, you know, outboxed him. And then he went in and he forced the guy to fight his fight. That's what happened in this one. And Oleksandr Yusik walked away with a clean 12 round unanimous decision and is now the unified heavyweight champ. But let's not, I think what I've been seeing is a lot of knocking of Anthony Joshua instead of praising Oleksandr Yusik. And that's not fair. Because most people were saying that Alexander Usyk, yes, the size advantage was was there, and that Joshua had the power and the size advantage. But everybody said that Usyk is a live underdog and should not be overlooked. And I do believe Joshua was overlooking him. So you know, people need to respect that and give some props to Alexander Usyk for how good he is instead of knocking. Anthony Joshua and trying to pick him apart um, for how bad people people think he is, and he's not. Anthony Joshua is a great fighter. He just lost to another great fighter fighting that great fighter's fight, which many guys do. You know, so it shouldn't they shouldn't be knocked. The great fighter should not be knocked for losing to another great fighter, especially when it wasn't a blowout. And you know, Anthony Joshua is going to have an opportunity to avenge that loss. Eddie Hearn's already uh, come out. They made it clear. They made it clear before the fight that there was a rematch clause. And Eddie Hearn's already come out and said it, it could possibly happen in January or February. 
You know, we got to see what the damage to the right eye of Joshua is. Um, but yeah, I, I'd say February, March area, you know, give it six months and we'll see these guys back in the ring and we'll see if Usyk is just better than Joshua or if Joshua can get some revenge. We'll see what happens. But, you know, I will go more into this fight in the in my aftermath video, that's, which I'm doing later on in the week. But this was the whole recap of the DAZN card that took place Saturday, September 25th. And it was highlighted by Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk for the Unified Heavyweight title. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. True boxing. You've been hit with the truth.